All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to retrieve dog images from the internet using Retrofit 2. And we're gonna have this floating action button which will allow us to get a new one each time we click it. So if we click on it, you'll see this nice loading animation and it will show a loading screen with a new dog image every time we click on it. And you'll also notice that the background changes colors every two to three seconds, which is just a nice UI effect you can add to your app. But uh, yeah, that's essentially gonna be the entire app. It will also have this very nice loading screen and my internet's a bit slow, so it might take a while sometimes, but uh, I'll show you later how to make that a bit faster. So the first thing we want to do is go to our Gradle scripts and open our build.gradle file. And for this project, we're gonna be using a repository from GitHub, which is gonna be my own. And this is the sample project, but I'll leave that in the video description down below. And if you just click on the link, we can then go to app and we will click on this build.gradle where you'll be able to find all the dependencies we need for this video. And the first one we want to copy is the build features with the view binding. So we'll just copy that and we'll paste it right below the Kotlin options. And right after that, we want to copy the dependencies right below the other implementations. So copy those and we will insert them right here at the bottom. So all you have to know is that we'll be using coroutines, retrofit2, glide for the images so we can load images into our app and a dot loader for the loading screen. And that's all we need for this project. So once you have all of that, you can go ahead and click on sync now. And as soon as we're done with that, go ahead and close the Gradle scripts folder and open your res folder because we will go to values and click on themes and we will edit the colors here just a bit. So for the first one, I'm just gonna pick some dark gray over here. And we're gonna do the same thing for the color primary variant. Just pick something very dark. And for the color secondary, just go ahead and click on white. Next, right under where it says customize your theme here, we want to add two new attributes. One's gonna be an item name, which is going to be of window action bar. And we want to set that to false. Then we want to go ahead and create another item. And this time it's gonna be window no title. And we're gonna set this one to true. So this will remove both the action bar and the title of the action bar. So we will just have a very nice big screen. After that, we can close our values folder and go to our Android manifest file because here we need to add the permission for the internet. So users permission, Android permission internet, and then just close that. And that's all we have to do in our Android manifest. And right after that, go to your drawable folder and right click on it because we will create a few new drawable resource files. And this is going to be for the gradients. And the first one will be named gradient underscore one. And it's going to be a shape for the root element. Then you can click on OK and it will generate this file. The next thing we have to do inside here is create a gradient tag. And the first thing we need to do is create an angle. So the first one will be set to 225 degrees. Then let's add an end caller, which will be set to 2196F3. And that will make a blue. And the start caller, which I just want to be a purple. And a faster way to do this, of course, is just to write that and pick some sort of random color from here, such as that. And then of course we need to close this. And that's gonna be our first gradient. Then we can go ahead and copy and paste this twice. So we're gonna create gradient two and gradient three. The next thing we have to do is change the angle to 135. And we're gonna change this one to a red. And this one down here to an orange. So it will look like this. And then the final one, I'm just going to change it to a red and a blue. So red and then a blue. And I'm also going to change the angle to 45. Then we should go ahead and create a new drawable resource file because this one will be for the animation list and we will call it gradient list. And as a root element, we have to select animation list and then click on okay. And inside here, we need to create an item with a drawable and the drawable is going to refer to our first gradient. So at drawable gradient one. And we have to set a duration for this. And we'll set that at 4,000 milliseconds and then close it. Then we have to go ahead and copy and paste this for the other two because this will be looping in an infinite loop. And of course, remember to change this to two and three. And that will take care of our gradient list XML. Next, let's go ahead and open our layout folder and open our activity underscore main XML and change it to a split view. We should also change this to a relative layout. And the first thing we should do is go ahead and give this a background, which is going to be at drawable, and we're gonna insert our gradient list. Also go ahead and remove this text view for we will not be using it. 
And for the rest of the XML, we're gonna to go to the GitHub page, click on this is dogs and click on app, click on source, click on main, click on res, layout, activity main XML, and then click on raw. So we can have this in a very simple format. And of course, the easiest thing to do is just to copy all of it and just paste it inside here, like that. And I'll go over really quick what all of this is. So the first one we have, of course, is the relative layout, which we decided to give a background of gradient list. Then we have a floating action button in the bottom right hand corner, which has only one purpose, which is to retrieve new images from the server. Then we have this later loading. Then we have this lady load. Then we have this lazy loader dependency, which allows us to insert these triple dots, which just jump up and down slowly, slowly to show that the images are loading and it looks really nice. And it has an ID of dots underscore loading. And there's a lot of attributes here that you can play with to make this look the way you want. So go ahead and play with that if you feel like. Then we have an image view with no image set to it yet with an ID of IV underscore random dog. And it has match parent for the width and height and center and parent set to true. Then it has a layout margin of zero and I put the scale type to fit center, which means you should always see the full image in the center of the screen. But anyway, the next thing to do is to close our res folder and go to the folder where the main activity is located, right click on that and create a new package, which we will call API. And the first thing we want to create inside here is a Kotlin file dot class. And this is going to be a data class. So we will just call this API data and click on enter. And remember to change this to a data class just by typing data in front of class. And you can close this, but you have to supply a constructor. So for this class here, we actually have to go to the API that we'll be using, which is going to be called random dog slash woof. And as you can see here, it will give us these two JSON tags. One is file size bytes and one is URL. So the first thing we have to do is copy this one here and create a value of it. And that's going to be of type int. And then we need to create a value for the other one. So go ahead and just copy URL, value URL, and that's gonna be of type string. And that's all we have to do for our API data class. And of course, if you're using a different API, you will have to do it for all of the parameters that you want to use. So maybe you'll have one that says description or title. You'll have to write those down as well, but they do also have tools that you can find in Android Studio, which does this for you. One of them is called Kotlin data class file from JSON. And I recommend you find this in the plugin section of Android Studio because this can save you a lot of time if you're dealing with bigger JSON files. But uh, if you're only using two, it's fine just to type them by hand. Next, we have to go and create a API interface, which is going to be using Retrofit 2. And to do this, just go ahead and click on Kotlin class slash file, click on interface and name this one API request. And one thing I'm gonna do inside here is create a constant value, which is called base URL. And this should be the base URL of the API that you're using. So if we go back to our browser, we'll be using random.dog, which is the base URL. So take that and just paste it inside here as a string. Then we need to go ahead and create an annotation. So type in at get, click on retrofit2, because that's what we have to import. And we need to import the value, which is going to be the HTTP request. So go back to your browser and this part right here is the part we want for this section here. And that will be the request we make to this base URL. Then right below it, we can go ahead and create a suspend function, which is going to be called get random dog, then double dots. And then we need to insert our API data. And this is the only request we'll be making for this tutorial. So that's all we have to do for this file here. And now the final thing we have to do is go to our main activity file and put all of this together. So the first thing we want to do inside here is create a late init file which is going to be called binding and it's going to be of type activity main binding. Then right under super on create, we're going to call binding and that's going to equal activity main binding dot inflate and it will inflate the layout inflator. Then inside here, we're just going to type in binding dot root and that will take care of inflating everything with our view binding. Then we need to call app compat delegate dot set default night mode. And then we have to say app compat delegate again and mode night no, which will 
keep our app in light mode. Now we're going to create a few functions and the first one will be used to start our background animation. So we'll just call background animation and right below that we're going to create another function that's called make API request which will load the first dog into our app as soon as we start it. Then we need to call binding and we need to select our floating action button and we want to set an on click listener for it. And the first thing we want to do to it, and the first thing we want to do with this floating action button is give it an animation. So floating action button dot animate and dot apply. Then we need to say rotation by, and we're gonna give it 360 degrees F with a duration of one second, which will be 1000 milliseconds. And then we have to call dot start. Also, every time we click on this floating action button, we want to make an API request. So we're gonna use the same function from above. And we also want to make sure that the image view disappears as soon as we click on this button. So we will call binding.iv random dog dot visibility. And we will set that to view.gone. Next under on create, we'll make some space. And the first function we want to create is the background animation function. And to do this, we just have to create a value of animation drawable, which is going to be of type animation drawable. And that's going to equal our binding dot relative layout dot background. And that's going to be used as an animation drawable or casted as an animation drawable. Then we have to refer to this animation drawable and we're going to create an apply block. I'm going to set an enter fade duration of 1000 milliseconds. And we need to set an exit fade duration which I will set to 3000 milliseconds. And we have to call start. And this will take care of the background animation for our application. Then under this, we have to go ahead and create the function that makes the API request. So make API request and create a block for that. And the first thing inside here we have to create is the API, which is going to be a retrofit.builder. Now we can type in dot base URL, which is gonna be the constant we created earlier. So base URL. And then we need to add a converter factory, which is going to be a JSON converter factory dot create. And we need to call dot build with dot create. And we have to get our API request class. So type in that and add class dot Java. Then below that, we need to create a coroutine. So global scope dot launch. And we're going to set this on the dispatches dot IO. Then we have to go ahead and type in try and the first thing we want to do is create a value of response, which is going to be the API we created above. And that's going to allow us to get the random dog. And now one thing I did here, so you guys can understand later, is create a log and just type in log D. We're going to set main as the tag and then go ahead and type in size. And we need to interpolate and add the response dot file size bytes. So this log will just inform us on how big each photo is before we download it. And to make sure that we don't download photos that are too big, I created some very basic logic that will stop it if it's more than 0.4 megabytes. So to do that, I went ahead and I wrote if response dot file size bytes is less than 400,000 kilobytes which is 0.4 megabytes. Then we have to call with context because we can only change UI components on the main thread. So we have to type in dispatches.main. And if it is less than 0.4 megabytes, we can use our glide library to load the image. So with application context dot load, and we will get the URL from the response. So dot URL. And we want to load that into the image view. So into binding dot IV random dog. And then don't forget to set your image view to visible. And in case the file's too big, we have to go ahead and try to remake the API request. So we'll just call make API request and it will just essentially do this in a recursive matter until we get a file that is less than 0.4 megabytes. And something more efficient, of course, would be to load these images in the background. So when the user clicks on the button, it will already be loaded, but I think for this example, this is perfectly fine, especially if you are just learning how to use Retrofit 2. This is a very good starter project for you to understand how to actually get files from the internet. And of course, we have to go and specify a catch. So it's going to be catch E, which will stand for exception, which is the most generic exception you can create. And we're just going to type in log E, which is used for exceptions. And it's going to be on the main thread or on the main activity. And we're just going to type in 
error, double dots, interpolate, and then e dot message. And this will tell you exactly what went wrong in this block over here. Then we can tidy this up by holding control alt plus L. And then the final thing to do is to go ahead and click on run and hope that the project works perfectly. All right, perfect. So as you can see, we have the loading animation when you start the app, and then it loads this dog with the background that is continuously transitioning from one color to another. And when you click on the floating action button, it will make this 360 spin animation and everything is working the way we wanted it to. So with that being said, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this video. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to leave them in the comments section below. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.